What matters is that we use new technology and that we direct the development of artificial intelligence in ways that make workers more productive, that enhance work rather than destroy work. We should not assume that technology must destroy work. It can improve work, make it more productive. And when work is more productive, wages can go up to reflect the improved productivity. But this requires that we direct technology to serve human purposes, to make work more dignified, more rewarding, rather than try to do as some Silicon Valley entrepreneurs are trying to do, to use AI to replace work, to make work obsolete. I think that's a mistake. I think that the strongest argument in favor of a universal basic income is that it could provide income security for everyone. And this could help alleviate poverty and to some extent could help alleviate inequality. So that is an attractive feature of a universal basic income. A third advantage of a universal basic income is that it could encourage better wages for essential workers whom we've been discussing because companies would know they would have to provide uh, good wages in order to attract workers. So those are the advantages. The reason for my ambivalence about a universal basic income is that it is sometimes proposed by Silicon Valley uh, entrepreneurs as a way of justifying technologies like AI that they believe in Silicon Valley, that they believe can make work obsolete. And they have a utopian scenario in mind in which they will invent robots that will make work obsolete, but the government will provide everyone who loses work with a universal basic income. I'm opposed to that Silicon Valley scenario for using basic income to make work obsolete. I think that the dignity of work is important because it enables everyone to contribute to the society and to win recognition and appreciation and respect for doing so. But if the universal basic income is used to supplement work rather than replace work, then it would have the advantages that I mentioned before, income security and lessening inequality. Well, you mentioned some experiments with the universal basic income in Korea. Can you tell me a little bit about the experiment? The government paid out to all citizens about four hundred dollars. And oh, this was during this was during the pandemic. Do you yes, mean? yes, just last year. Up. To a thousand dollar, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Well, I think I think it is worth building on this experiment if it can be done in a way that supports and supplements work rather than seeks to replace work. So I do think if a universal basic income is used to provide basic in income security for everyone. As it was used during the pandemic, then I think it can be a valuable policy, provided, as I mentioned before, it's not used to undermine the dignity of work and the mutual recognition and appreciation that comes when people feel they have contributed to the society. The possible decrease in the will to work will depend on. Wage levels. If, for example, a delivery worker is paid a very low wage, then I can imagine that providing a universal basic income will reduce the willingness of that delivery worker to work 16 hours a day delivering packages for a low wage. But in that case, the problem is not with the income security, the problem is with the low wages. So one advantage of a universal basic income is that it would force employers to increase wages 
for essential workers to levels that enable them to live a decent life. So if the wages are high enough, even with a universal basic income, to do their jobs.